Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary. Let me tell you the things that I'm going to share with you on this week's video. We're going to start with this mandolin right here. Uh, this is mandolin number two, and it's the first mandolin that I put a, a finish on uh, in this particular batch, and I will reference last week's video. This one needs to be done by the end of the week and be strung up and playable. So I'm going to take today, Monday, and uh, put the strings and stuff on it so that if there's any issues or anything, I'll have time to take care of those before the end of the week. So by the end of the day today, hopefully, we'll have that thing in the case and ready to go. The next thing that we're going to uh, try to show in this video is, again, referencing last week's video, mandolin number one. Uh, we're going to take the same patterns and stuff from the inlay around the tailpiece, and we're going to uh, uh, put a very similar style of, of inlay in around the neck heel and the back and that whole neck joint area. So we're going to do that, and I'll try to show you some of that. Uh, also, again, referencing last week's video, I've briefly shown a Celtic cross that I've been carving as a weekend project and I've already had a couple of phone calls about that and uh, two or three comments in the comment sections about that Celtic cross so I thought well okay I'll take just a little bit I know it's not mandolin related but we'll take a little bit of the time from this video to show you more about what I'm doing with that Celtic cross and then uh, the rest of the week will be filled out with and the rest of this video as well with binding on the peg heads of the mandolins that are left that need to have binding on the peg heads. And then hopefully there'll be enough time left over with, uh, with all that stuff to get to finish the color on mandolin number four, which is a R5 country boy with an F style body and an A style peg head. So it's pretty cool little instrument, but that's that's on the job jar list as well today, or this week, is to get uh, that on there. So, let's get started. Number one, we're going to put strings on mandolin number two. Don't get confused. And uh, But first, I noticed that back there in the area where I do that work, I have a light bulb burn out. So we got to fix that, and then we get to work on the mandolins. So, here I go. Okay, the first thing I did was pick out the paper that I had slipped down in here to keep overspray from going inside the body of the mandolin. I took off the uh, piece of tape that I had put down in the truss rod pocket so that finish wouldn't get down in there and nasty those things up. And I've got the uh, tape off of the fretboard here. Now I need to get just a little bit of lacquer thin or something to go over that reel. Uh, carefully and get the tape residue off. Now after not only the tape residue has been taken off, but I leveled the frets, dressed them up real good, cleaned the uh, fret proper and the fret ends and rounded them over so that they're not sharp or anything, and it is now time to fit the bridge. And I have this homemade jig that the bridge will fit into. This jig has a roller on it. It's locked into place. And now I can roll that bridge back and forth along the mandolin top with the piece of sandpaper turned upside down and fit that bridge foot right to that mandolin top. After the bridge is fit, I have a box full of bone nut blanks and we'll pick one of them and shape it 
and fit it into this slot for the nut. That one will be fine. And now I will share with you a couple of boards basically that I will take and clamp into this vise to hold them in a certain way so that I can work on this nut blank. I've got slots cut in this board at a couple of different angles. And I can just fit them in there and hold them with one hand and work with the other to cut the nut slots or or uh, file the ends off of them or round them over. And then this one here is sort of a two-piece thing and that nut will fit in there and then this board here will come on and clamp it and I can deepen the slots and uh, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm, I'm doing the final fitting. I'll get the nut slots pretty close, the uh, string slots for the, on the nut, but um, I won't get the final height until I'm actually putting the strings on, but I'll get it pretty close anyway right now. And now everything is shaped, cleaned, polished, and the slots are pretty close to where they need to be. I'm just going to put a teeny little drop of glue right there and slip that in and move on to the ferrules and the tuning keys. Now I have the ferrules installed and the mounting screw holes drilled in the back. So we're going to put the keys on. Okay, so I'm closing in on it. The bridge is ready to install. The fretboard's all been cleaned up, oiled, and the nut is made. The tuning machines are installed. And really the last big major thing to do is put the tailpiece, cover, or the tailpiece on. Now this mandolin has a K&K &K internal twin pickup and the jack mounts right in the end pin hole of the tailpiece and it won't fit so i'm going to have to file this tailpiece out a little bit to make it fit over the end pin jack and it is time to do the engraving on the tailpiece that's a fairly time consuming thing it takes two or three hours to do that and so my day is going to run out before i can get all that taken care of and I will not get strings on this thing today but I should do it first thing in uh, first you know tomorrow morning so uh, right now I'm going to work on the tailpiece
Now for the folks who are getting mandolins in this batch, right at the moment I have two different styles of cases that are available. The traditional shaped case. These are what I reserve for the our, uh, five country boys. And then we have this uh, modern looking teardrop case. And here's mandolin number 1253, which you just heard a second ago. Fits very well in either one of these cases. And they both seem to be nice quality cases. So you have your choice. You can have the traditional shaped or the teardrop. That's what I've got here right at the moment. I mentioned earlier that I would share a little bit of this Celtic cross that I showed in last week's video, and here it is. I started out with um, a nice big, thick white oak board that had a lot of defects in it, knots and splits and cracks, and so I cut out just the good pieces and had them in a pile, and I thought, well, you know what? Here would be a good opportunity for a, not a pet project, but one that I had in the back of my head for a long time, which is an extensively carved Celtic cross. So I started cutting pieces and here we go. This is what I have. The two arms here, I just put a notch cut in this board and a notch cut in this board so that they kind of cut together make the cross and then these pieces here I'll see if I can't show you how they fit together they fit like that right there they just slide in and slide out so that when uh, after I've done carbon after I'm done carbon the entire thing then we'll assemble it with glue but for the moment right now I I'm able to take it all apart anytime I need to work on it. I intend to do this same type of woven pattern here, all through here. Uh, the cross proper will probably be cut off about right here. And I've left this on so that I can have some sort of base for it to stand in. Because it's going to be a freestanding thing with carving on both sides. And we're going to carve this little panel here, these panels here, here, all to the sides and the face and the back of it as well. And so uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to work on it. It, it was started out being just a weekend winter, winter project. And so now that winter is kind of going away, there's going to be a lot of stuff to do out in the yard and flower gardens and regular gardens and uh, lawn mowing and all that sort of stuff so that there's uh, not going to be as much time uh, on the weekends as as there has been but hopefully we won't completely stop working on it and even if i have to there's always next winter but that's my Celtic cross project It is now Friday, so let me give you an end of the week tally of all of the things that got done. Uh, mandolin number two, which you heard me play uh, a little bit just a few, a few minutes ago, uh, is now in its new home in North Carolina. Uh, mandolin number one, by the end of the day on Friday, has had several pieces 
of that viney inlay stuff put in around on the uh, on the neck heel and here's a shot of those how, how many pieces we got put in and what it looks like the all of the mandolins here that still have peg head binding to be done I had a chance to work on them just enough to say that I've got a single piece of binding added to each one of those so they're all one step closer to being done and mandolin number four which we set out to get the finish on the stain and, the, and some clear coats on this week I have not even come close to working on that mandolin at all I, I started at the top of the list each day and worked my way down towards that mandolin number four and never even got to it so that will have to be uh, the main project or one of the main projects on next week's video which I certainly uh, hope that you will come back and visit with us on next week's vis video we will work more on mandolin number one more on the peghead bindings maybe we'll get stain on mandolin number four and let's not forget that mandolin number three is uh, pretty much hung long enough to be cured out and we can we can put strings on it about any time we we want to or more accurately put we can put strings on it about any time we get can get enough time to do it so i certainly hope that you'll come back next week and join me once again for the next episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary where we will tackle all those projects. So I look forward to seeing you then. Hit the like and subscribe button and thank you so very much for sticking with me to the very end of this video. Bye.